Hey there everybody, how's it going today? So my name is PO17 or P017, uh, whichever you prefer. And today I'm going to be going over a video with you guys on this specific JVC that's in front of me, as well as other JVCs that it applies to. So this JVC in front is my IART AV32F485, which I've already made two other videos on. Uh, one of them was just detailing about how the TV was, and the other one was on my purity and convergence adjustments. But this video is going to be on the menu and the service menu. So this does also apply to people who have some other IR TVs as well as JVC D-Series TVs. Uh, to certain extents, some JVC D-Series and IRTs might share different menu settings. But overall, if you have a menu that looks like this, you should be good to go. Now, in terms of what you're going to need, potentially, so if you're going to want to access the service menu, you're going to want to have your remote here. But if you want to just go through your menu settings, you can do it from your front panel right here. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So, first thing is obviously your menu. We're going to be talking about all the different uh, settings here. Mainly going to be focusing on this page in particular, but there's a couple other things that I wanted to uh, mention. So, without further ado. So, tint, you want to keep usually as neutral as you can possibly be. Uh, this is just so you can have an accurate red, blue, and green. Your color, this is preference. Uh, typically speaking, I like to turn my color down just a tiny bit because whenever I'm playing 240p games, I don't want the color to be very oversaturated. And in some games, it tends to look like that depending on the set of the TV. Uh, but I've seen more people uh, turn up the color for 240p and whatnot, but that's mainly just a preference thing. So for picture, the picture is actually contrast. So this is your bright levels. So if you turn up your contrast or your picture on an area that is much more bright, uh, you're going to see a lot of the bright areas light up even more. But if you turn it down, the brighter areas are going to turn a bit darker. Uh, for your brightness, so this is your dark levels, your black levels. This is where any darker areas apply to. So if your darker areas are a little too black or too dark, you might want to turn up the brightness. If your darker areas look a little washed out, you might want to turn down the brightness. But overall, this is how I set mine. And these can also vary in terms of the TV set that you have. So some sets, if they're more used, you might have to crank up the contrast and brightness a little bit more. If they're more less used, you could say, <laughs> uh, then you can usually keep them pretty well. But anyways, so detail, this is your sharpness. And I'll get into a little bit more in terms of sharpness and how to look at adjusting this one here in just a sec. All right, so right now I have 240p test suite pulled up, and I have a picture of Artemio showing right here just as a good reference point. But basically sharpness will sharpen up the borders of anything that is very much contrasting, so right here. It mainly applies to 2D games or 240p, uh, because in 3D you don't necessarily see it all that much. However, uh, typically what you'll see is on the borders here, it will sharpen it all up. If you uh, turn up your sharpness a little too much, what you'll start getting is an effect called haloing, which is a white outline that goes around the entirety of the border. Now, you might be able to see there is a tiny, tiny bit of an effect here. Oh my god, my camera's strobing like mad. But that's mainly due to the camera. You can't really see it too much on the set. And also, there is maybe a tiny bit noticeable here, but it's not actually part of the, shape, uh, the sharpness itself considering that it's not even on this other side. But that's what you want to kind of keep a look at so you can adjust your sharpness properly. Now, if you don't want it to be very sharp at all, you can just turn it all the way down. But do keep in mind that if you turn up the sharpness too much, you will encounter this haloing effect, especially for 2D games. Now, let's go back out here. A couple of your other menu settings, so color temperature. I set this to low just to get the most neutral color, but if you want to... Uh, raise it up to have a more warmer or lower it for a more cooler setting. You can definitely do that. Uh, right here, noise muting, don't worry about that. That's always turned on on any JVC that you pretty much get. But VSM, this is a big one. So this is called Velocity Scan Modulation. And typically speaking, you want to turn it off. Now, if you have it turned on, and we'll zoom back in here, and I'll show you what it exactly does. So if we look into Artemio's face right here and we turn it on, oh, actually I got to do it right here, you may notice that the uh, black edges start to get a little bit more bold. And I'm just changing it from off to on, off, on, off, on. 
I apologize for the camera a little bit because I'm actually holding the camera right now. But if you turn it on or off, it will typically sharpen up the edges. A little bit different from sharpness because it's not actually creating that white border, especially if you have VSM on. It mainly just sharpens up a whole bunch of the black borders uh, around here. Typically speaking, uh, I always leave it off because I do not like velocity scan modulation. On this particular set, it's not that apparent though whenever you turn it on. But on a set like a Sony uh, or whatnot that has velocity modulation that can be turned on low or high, uh, it can be very, very apparent that the picture looks way different uh, with it turned up. And on my friend's set, in fact, he actually has it turned on. I personally don't like it too much, but that's whatever. It's mainly also a preference thing. Uh, for audio here, I'm not sure how many JVC sets have smart sound, but if you do have it, please turn it off. It makes your speakers sound absolutely terrible and really weird because it tries to, I guess, equalize the sound on both sides, but it doesn't do a great job at it, so just turn that off. Uh, these other ones, you don't really have to worry about too much. So besides that, that's pretty much your menu settings there. So let's go ahead and head to the service menu. So for the service menu, you're going to want your remote here. And for your remote, you're going to want to, to display the sleep timer right here. So once you hit this uh, sleep timer, you will see it'll pop up with zero minutes. Keep that up. As long as it has, says zero minutes here, you're going to want to hit display and video status at the same time. That'll bring up your service menu. Really cool stuff. So for your service menu, you're going to want to look at a couple different areas. So the first one we're going to look at is V slash C or S. So this will show you a few different settings here. And give me just one sec. I'm actually going to switch to right here to show you exactly what these menu settings are. So bright picture, color, tint, you can't really change them. Uh, this detail is your sharpness, but this is actually more in a reference. So if you change this, you change your sharpness setting in the menu for... A reference point so if you turned it lower you will start at a lower sharpness but if you turn it up higher you will start at a higher sharpness so don't really touch this um, there's a couple other things tints the same way uh, your cutoffs here and your drives here are big for your colors so typically speaking and I'll turn to a color uh, bar let's hope that the camera can play around nicely with it but essentially speaking for your color bars uh, I will adjust the cutoffs and the drives accordingly. So the cutoff is for your lower end here. So this is for any of your darker uh, transitions for from white or from any other color. So usually you would look at your white and you would see if it starts tinting a little bit of a different color from any of the three, and you would adjust the other ones accordingly to that. So I tried to adjust it as best as I could to get a very neutral transition to a dark uh, white. And for drive, it's the same thing, but for the bright areas. So if you keep turning, or if you keep going up to a brighter and brighter white, and it starts tinting a little bit warm or tinting a little bit cold, so for example, if it starts tinting red or blue or even green in some cases, uh, that's where you'd want to adjust some of your other things. But before you do any of these adjustments, do adjust your color temperature as well as your color to see if that helps out first, because you don't necessarily want to adjust uh, the drive. Now, that's another good point here that I will bring up here so, uh, shortly. So for these drives here, there is another setting here called NTSC Matte. This is actually your red push. And what red push is, is it's a American thing for some reason, or I guess a North American thing, which increases the potency or the, the vibrancy of your red. And what how that looks like is it looks like this. So once I turn it up, as you can see Artemio's face right here, he starts turning a little bit more orange. Funny enough, so this is the biggest example is going from 0 to 1. Um, but you will notice your red is much more vibrant. So if I turn it up here, the red turns quite a bit more vibrant. Um, this is mainly apparent just on NTSC sets, like I said. Uh, over in PAL in Europe, usually they don't have this issue. Um, but the thing is, is that most sets don't allow you to turn off red push. But if you can turn it off, such as on my iArt here and on maybe your other JVC sets, please do, because that can help your colors tremendously. So I turn it off to get the most accurate color for this uh, setting. So do turn off NTSC matte. Black ST, if it is on, I usually will turn it off because this actually changes your black levels a bit to be a bit darker in contrast. So I keep it zero to be very neutral.
Uh, most of these other ones you don't have to worry about too much. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much. So this here is your scan velocity modulation. If you do have it turned on, you can actually change the gain, and I forget exactly what this is. And this is how much it affects your screen. So you can definitely do that as well. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and go into deflection. Alright, so as you can see, I pulled up the monoscope pattern for this, so deflection here is going to be pretty neat. First thing you're going to come up with is V frequency uh, and whatnot. Don't really mess with these, uh, but H position is something that you can definitely change to center your screen. So this monoscope pattern and also the grid pattern also helps out quite a lot with that. So right now mine's set at 20, but if I adjust it, obviously it moves the horizontal position. Uh, v phase, don't worry too much about that, but V size, you definitely want to. This increases your vertical size on both the top and bottom. Mine's set to 56, but if you change it, you can see how it changes the setting there. Uh, v center, this one for some reason doesn't work on my set. I'm not sure exactly uh, if it works on any other JVC set, but I have a feeling what it's supposed to do. It's, just, it's supposed to have the position of the uh, vertical, and it won't go down or up, so it's a little bit weird, but tell me if you guys are able to get anything out of this setting. Uh, VS correction, so mine's set to 9, but what this does is this uh, changes how squished or how stretched your uh, top and bottom is. So that's pretty neat. I usually like to leave it at 9 in my TV just to have it very neutral. V linearity is kind of a similar thing. It just basically biases uh, whether the top or the bottom is more preferenced in terms of it being squished or stretched out. So mine's set to 10 right now, but as you can see, it squishes the bottom and stretches the top if I set it closer to zero, and it does the opposite if I adjust it higher, so I leave it at 10. H size, horizontal size, pretty obvious. If you adjust it, it'll squish it or pull it apart. So a couple other ones you may want to look for, EWCR top and EWCR bottom, so this is mainly your pin uh, for adjusting the corners, so mine's set to 8 right now, but if I set it a little bit uh, higher or lower, you can see it adjusting the top there. Let's see, set it back to 9. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll set it to 9. Bottom here, same thing, but for the bottom, so mine was set to 12 originally, so we can leave it like so. Your east-west par uh, parabola, so this is for all four corners, so mine's set to 36, but if you adjust it, you can see all the corners bowing in or bowing outward. And this is really helpful for just matching the corners perfectly to each side. There's too, not too much else to talk about besides trapezium. This is a really neat one. So this biases your top and your bottom. So as you can see here, if I set it a bit uh, higher, it will squish the top in, and then it will pull the bottom out quite a bit. So mine was set here to 34, so if we set it back to normal, it looks pretty neutral. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So that's all the settings that you really need to worry about on this JVC. If your JVC uh, D-Series or iArt doesn't have some of these settings, don't really worry. It may have more settings or may have less settings than mine, but these are the ones that I found on my iArt to be very good and very helpful. And of course, using 240p Test Suite to test all this as well. So that's pretty much all I got for this video. So like I said, let me know in the comments if this helped you out and if you have a JVC D-Series or iArt that has a very similar, if not the same menu, or if there are different adjustments for yours. But other than that, thank you so much guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.